Isaac and his mother lived alone in a small house on a hill. Isaac kept to himself, drawing pictures and playing with his toys as his mom watched Christian broadcasts on the television. Life was simple, and they were both happy. That was until the day Isaac's mom heard a voice from above. Your son has become corrupted by sin. He needs to be saved. I will do my best to save him, my lord, Isaac's mother replied, rushing into Isaac's room, removing all that was evil from his life. Again, the voice called to her. Isaac's soul is still corrupt. He needs to be cut off from all that is evil in this world and confess his sins. I will follow your instructions, Lord. I have faith in thee, Isaac's mother replied as she locked Isaac in his room away from the evils of the world. One last time, Isaac's mom heard the voice of God calling to her. You've done as I've asked, but I still question your devotion to me to prove your faith. I will ask one more thing of you. Yes, Lord, anything. Isaac's mother begged. To prove your love and devotion, I require a sacrifice. Your son Isaac will be this sacrifice. Go into his room and end his life as an offering to me to prove you love me above all else. Yes, Lord, she replied, grabbing a butcher's knife from the kitchen. Isaac, watching through a crack in his door, trembled in fear. Scrambling around his room to find a hiding place, he noticed a trap door to the basement hidden under his rug. Without hesitation, he flung open the hatch, just as his mother burst through his door and threw himself down into the unknown depths below. I don't like making videos when I have other things to do in life, like school and work, but I got some time, so I'll crank out a video. Might as well. Ever heard of Binding of Isaac? Well, if you've been browsing the less than $5 section in the Steam store and come across it, you may have asked yourself, well, is it good? Oh my god, it's so fucking good! Just buy it! What is Binding of Isaac? Well, it's like a roguelike dungeon game. What is roguelike? It's the embodiment of all evil in this life. In all seriousness, these types of games provide a good challenge and will break down your soul into a small pile of sadness dust only to be blown back to the main title screen because you've died 50 times trying to get to a certain level. Anyways, Binding of Isaac has another star feature. Procedural generation! Yes, that's right. If you rely on maps or walkthroughs, you will have a terrible time because every level of the dungeon maps are procedurally generated from a select list of room templates. There are a lot of them, and some are unique to a certain floor. One playthrough may have you going through the basement level and you stumble across a sacrifice room or another playthrough. You could go then through the basement level again, not to find a sacrifice room, but a challenge room instead. Yes, the possibilities are endless. There are two types of people who play this game. No, there are actually three. The ones who memorize every detail, and the other people who just play going through the motions, slowly learning based on trial and error. And then you have the people who turned on the game for two minutes, died, then said this game sucks my nards, and wrote a nasty review and refunded the game. If you want to see those reviews, you can just go to the negative review section, you'll probably find a few. Let's talk about the story. Now the story is the basic premise. Isaac is the main character, he has a mom who is devoutly religious. One day she hears the voice of God who tells her that Isaac is corrupt or something. She takes away his clothes, his toys, everything he loves, and then eventually God asks her to kill Isaac. Before she can do that, Isaac escapes into the basement and has to fight off all kinds of monsters. Now, if you thought your parents' basement was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet, son. The gameplay is straightforward. Arrow keys to shoot, Y stick keys to move, E to throw bombs, yes, little Isaac is a little terrorist, isn't he? As well as Q to use action items and space to use activated items. Now, I know that's confusing, but it'll make sense in a bit. Another big point of this game is that you must go around collecting keys, bombs, and coins, and hearts. Hearts keep you alive, keys open chest doors and eventually barriers, depending on the level you're on. Bombs blow up certain obstacles, 
find secret rooms, and damage enemies, with coins being used for the various shops, machines, and beggars scattered across the floors. These all help you in your quest to gain trinkets and passive items which you can use to defeat bosses. These trinkets and passive items are essentially power-ups with their own unique abilities, and there are a lot of them. At certain points, you will be literally sorting through which trinkets you need and which ones you can discard. The gameplay is genius because of its simplicity. Like most roguelike games, it relies on the two basic instincts, running and gunning. You are mainly going to be dodging enemy attacks and chipping away at them with your tears. Oh, I forgot to mention, you shoot tears. Yes, this game is very depressing. While the gameplay is simplistic, combined with the other generation of the map layout, you will always have a different experience no matter how many times you boot up the game, and when you throw challenges in the mix, you are going to have yourself a good time. I should also talk about bosses. There are like 50 bosses you can fight. Some bosses have alts which can be unlocked after completed a few prerequisites, and they also have to fight the 7 deadly sins or the 7 super deadly sins, patent pending. Either way, you will learn you will eventually learn all of their moves just from memory and you'll begin to make more and more progress each time throughout the playthroughs. Let's talk about the art style. Now, if you've played Castle Crashers or games that were either on Newgrounds or, or made by Newgrounds figures, you'll love the art style as it perfectly encapsulates the early 2000s to 2010s style of animation that everyone used. And the art style is cute and charming. Yes, this is the same art style that has floating heads with bloody tears and no eyes. And I love it all the same. Now, I can't speak for Rebirth or Afterbirth or Repentance. But this game is perfect. You may think it's unfair, but to me, well, well, let's just say it'll chew you up and spit you out way before you ever complete the game. But you'll honestly get a lot of good training and a good idea as to what roguelike games are and the mindset you should have when going into them. So if you are new to roguelike dungeon games, then this is the perfect starter for you. And you won't have to worry about spending an, an exorbitant amount of money only to find out it's not your cup of tea. It's Since it's only like $3 or 50 cents on a Steam sale, you won't bat an eye at the price or shed a tear either. It's a near-perfect game, and I, Kami's Crab, wholeheartedly recommend it.